Why are we meeting up here, guys? So no one can overhear us. We found out why your plane blew up. My plane? Yes, that almost killed me. What happened? One of the warheads was tampered with. The safeties were overridden. And it was set to detonate after the aircraft touched down. You mean, we have a traitor? Yes. The techs only found traces of your DNA in the plane. No evidence of who could have been behind us. I don't suppose you found any... bodies? Uh, no. No one was hurt. Oh, just checking. That's odd. Past me was in the plane. Hello, I'm Interlysium, and we're back in Kerbal Origins. Now, this is going to be our latest spacecraft. It's high tech, lots of new stuff we've unlocked, and it's going to go and get us even more science to get even more tech. This is a crew compartment attached to a load of science stuff, and below it, this is a science lab. Now, it generates science per day, um, depending on where it is. So, some places get more, and some places get less science. I'm not exactly sure how it works. But, you know, a generic science is cool. Below that we have the nuclear reactor. This is a 3.75 meter part. It's ridiculously large, ridiculously heavy. I think it runs off uranium hexafluoride. And it generates a lot of heat. And this heat is going to be what's going to cause the amount of power that we need. For this electric engine, this electric generator basically takes all the heat and using a, uh, a Brayton gas turbine, I believe, uh, it... it generates a lot of power. Now, we're talking we need about 2.5 gigawatts. This is a giant uh, liquid fuel tank. It's pretty boring, but below it is the, what we've come here for and what the main thing about this spacecraft is. It's a fusion drive. It takes pellets of deuterium and tritium and using 2.5 gigawatts of electricity, which is ridiculous, it uses a laser to create confinement fusion to power the spacecraft. Now, above it, we have attached to it some parts we have got some uh, jet engines, which use the liquid fuel because we have it anyway to try and, you know, give us more lift. And we've got four uh, four just liquid fuel boosters. There are actually going to be eight. Um, I've just taken a couple off the front so that you can't, you know, you can actually see what's going on. Oh, on the side before we launch, we have the largest possible uh, heat radiators because heat is a problem in space. There's no air to convect the heat away. So we're relying on these heat radiators to get rid of the waste heat and stop our kerbals frying to death. So, you know, let's launch this puppy. Everything is cool. We've got Jeb in the top. We've got Bill and Bob in the science module. Bill and Bob are going to be doing our science this mission. And Jeb's going to be in charge of making sure we don't, you know, crash. And also the uh, the fusion drive, which is completely experimental. Alright, so let's put them in there and power up the jet engines and make sure they get up to for us because they take a while to spool up. Now, the downside of a fusion drive is that fusion fuses the deuterium and tritium, which are just isotopes of hydrogen, to make helium, and it gives off a lot of spare neutrons, and these spare neutrons are kind of dangerous. They're, they can do a lot of damage themselves, and they can make other substances radioactive. So everyone for several kilometers around the launch pad is currently in bunkers underground to prevent them dying from radiation. So we can't have this engine spooled up while any Kerbals are nearby because they die. Um, it, it is a known issue. So, launching this thing on the ground probably shouldn't be done because we probably radiated the launch pad and that's going to take a lot of money to clear up. But, it's so awesome, I can't help it. Now, we're going up at normal speed for a little while just to show you how it takes off because a lot of the power we're getting right now is from the actual fusion drive. I think we're getting maybe 0.5 thrust to weight ratio from everything else and the fusion drive is providing I think about 0.65 or something off the top of my head I guess now I've got the air intake visible so that you know we can actually see the uh, the intake air because we're going to have to turn them off at some stage and eject them because when the intake air gets too low they start to crash and if one side crashes before the other um, they flame out, sorry it's not it's the actual word then we're going to tip and that would be bad. So we're, we're going to have to be like on the money with that. Now hopefully because we've got a lot of thrust weight coming from things that aren't the, uh, the jet engines, we'll be fine. Like if a couple of them flame out, we can eject them. Whereas in a plane, if like one, one of your wings flames out, then you're going to get a, a horrible lateral spin and that's really hard to get out. Oh, we're in four times speed now. 
So we're taking off. We're going to be ejecting the jet engines soon. Just waiting for them to drop below about 0 0.08. There we go. I think they actually flamed out there, and I think I just ejected them as they flamed out. So that's fine. Now the solid fuel, the, the liquid fuel boosters will be going up for a little while. They're using vectoring engines, so we can get a little bit more uh, torque. Well, not torque necessarily because they're vectoring engines, but allowing us to point in the right direction. So here we go. Eject them. And we're just powering up now with the fusion engine itself. Now I'm just trying to make sure we get our apoaps. Yeah, probably going to go for about 100 km apoaps. Now our panels can't be deployed in atmosphere because like center panels they rip off. So let's deploy them now out of atmosphere. Oop, that's the ladders. Let's put the ladders away. There we go. And these uh, waste heat panels are going to get rid of all our waste heat because otherwise our kerbals would fry to death. And that would be bad. So... I think we've done such a lovely, nice curve up that we've actually got a really easy orbit. The fusion drive does look awesome. I love that texture. It's a shame they haven't redone the texture for the liquid fuel uh, fuselage part because it's just a scaled up part. But I think we've got a very good orbit there. So skip from forwards. We now have a perfect 100 meet, 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer orbit. Our takeoff was great. Our takeoff was such a lovely arc that we actually had a very um, high periaps relatively anyway before we had to start doing our apoax burn to boost it. And we're now in orbit. Everything looks shiny and dandy. So let's zoom out. Now we're going to go for a burn and we're going to go to Moho. Because we had two choices with the window of the launch we had. We had, I think, Moho and I think Drez. Um, but I'm feeling Moho, especially since it'll be a good test of our waste heat panels and our ridiculous amounts of Delta V we can get from the fusion drive. Because it takes a lot of Delta V to get to Moho. And because it's so close to the sun, we should have even more problems getting rid of heat. So we're going to try and go, you know, hardest thing we can. So the, the, uh, the spacecraft has already been in space for about 20, 24 days, I think, or something by this. Yeah, 23 days, just shy of 24 at this stage. And it's used a little bit of its nuclear fuel in the reactor because the reactor just runs. But other than that, it's it's working perfectly. And we've got plenty of fuel left in our liquid fuel tank. In fact, so much, I'm actually worried about the weight because we currently weigh, I think, about 130 tons or something, maybe just shy. Uh, we've used about a quarter of it to get into orbit, but it's it's absolutely ridiculous. This engine, especially, is it's very special. It will always use 2.5 gigawatts, which means that at lower thrusts you get better specific impulses, and at higher thrusts you get less specific impulse. And the specific impulse is still redonkulous. It's completely amazing. This gets such good specific impulse, and the thrust goes up to. 1.1 mega newtons of force, so that's 1,100 kilonewtons. So let's close that and let's do our burn. Now I'm guessing about the burn here. So our thrust is there we go, 715. You can see we've got a specific impulse of like 22,000. So if we back it all up to max, we get a specific impulse of 15,000. 15,000 is our minimum specific impulse. If we lower the throttle, then we get a higher specific impulse. It's crazy. This thing is, like, amazing. Admittedly, we did have to get a small nuclear power plant into... I say small, it's the biggest one we can. Um, it's the only way to power it without going, like, full fusion. Uh, I think we only have two types of fusion drive at the moment, and we don't have an antimatter drive, so we're relying on this. Okay, let's just finish off the burn. Now, unlike solar panels, uh, waste heat panels want to be parallel to the rays of the sun, so they pre like present a minimal cross-section, because you don't want them heating up from the sun. Whereas solar panels want the maximum cross-section, so they're perpendicular to the sun's rays, so that they can get like the maximum amount of sun hitting them. We want the minimum amount of sun hitting our waste heat radiator, because we don't want them heating up from the sun. We want them getting rid of it. So, now we're just messing around with our ascending... I think it's the ascending node? Yeah. The ascending node, um, try and get us a perfect encounter. It isn't great because Moho's really elliptical and also really inclined. 
which is why it takes a lot of delta v to get there, which is why I thought this would be a brilliant test. For our super effective, efficient drive. So we have a good maneuver node there, and it will take us about a kilometer of delta v. And the question is, how long will it take us to do this burn? Because the estimated burn time there is like completely bollocks. It's going to take us minutes to do the burn. And the the MechJeb won't tell you because MechJeb doesn't understand the interstellar parts. So we're going to need to actually do some maths. So uh, don't worry, don't put you off. It's relatively simple-ish maths. So let's do this. What have we got? We've got vessel info. So we've got weight. Right. So Let's use Fm equals ma, so that's force equals mass times acceleration. Newton's very simple equation. So we've got, let, let's use a thrust of 200 kilonewtons. So let's use a lower thrust so we get a better specific impulse, use less fuel. So let's use 200. So we know our mass from here is about 125, and we want to find the acceleration. Okay, what do we have that equals acceleration? We have velocity over time uh, equals acceleration, because it's, you know, meters per second squared. So, if we use... Velocity equals our delta v, because delta v is just change in velocity, so it is a velocity. f over m equals a, which equals v over t. So let's rearrange that. We get f over m equals delta v over t, which we can rearrange to make t equals delta v m over f. So we find our time using delta v mass divided by the force of our engine. So put the numbers in. And if we put them exactly in, as in using the non-rounded numbers, we get a time of 11 minutes. Which, because you want to put it directly over the time, is five and a half minutes either side. That's fairly simple maths. Ish. It's fairly simple maths. I think it's more like GCC maths, isn't it? I don't know what that equates to in other parts of the world. But, you know, it's about maths you learn when you're like 15 or 16, isn't it? I think. So it's really nice being able to do this from first principles, and it makes sense here, because the higher the delta v, the longer it's going to take, the higher the mass, the longer it's going to take, the higher the force of your engine, the less time it'll take. So it makes sense on that level as well. So now we have the time we need to burn, we just need to do our burn, and we need to make sure our engine is firing at 200 kilonewtons, which should get us a ridiculous specific impulse, because that's like a fifth of the max thrust that the engine can do. Right, so let's set up a alarm clock, because I, I've got used to the fact that every time I'm time accelerating recently, I've been skipping past spheres of influence, maneuver nodes. I'm really bad at time acceleration. So let's put a maneuver node in, and this maneuver node will stop time acceleration. So let's just fast forward as fast as we can, and... I'm, I'm hoping it'll stop it, because if not, I'm, I'm putting my fate in this, and we're going to be going right to the wire, but, uh... Oh, oh, yes, it is stopping it. Good. I was really, really worried. Um, oh, yeah, I put it six minutes ahead of it, so we want five and a half minutes, so we're going to be waiting an extra 30 seconds. But that should give us time to make sure we're aligned with the node. We are... Check all our stats... Uranium hexafluoride. I think it's uranium hexafluoride. UF4. We've got plenty of that. Haven't even used 10%. So, let's power up the engine. Thrust. I think that's about as close to 200 as we can get. Now, we're on about 24 times time acceleration here, because this burn takes 11 minutes, as, you know, we calculated. And I didn't really think you wanted to watch 11 minutes of just having the engine on. Um, I admit I tabbed out at this point and, you know, did something else. And bam! Look at that! We got it right to within a few seconds. So let's get rid of that. And we aren't getting an encounter now, but we're getting really, really damn close. And our ascending node is actually ahead of us now, so we can actually go ahead and put another node on and still get an optimal trajectory from it. So skipping further ahead, we managed to get our encounter, so let's slow ourselves down. Fire up the fusion drive. I don't think we need to pack whack it full bass to max, I think we're roughly uh, 400 newtons worth of thrust. 
should be enough to slow us down. However, because we are trying to burn before we get to the periaps node, this is going to cause our periaps to drop because we're slowing down. So I'm going to angle us slightly more towards the planet just to counteract this gravitational pull. And you can see now we're getting eclipsed by Moho. Now Moho's about a gravity for point, point two five g, point two seven five g, something about that. And we currently weigh just shy of one hundred twenty-five tons. Now to put this in perspective. This is about fifteen double-decker buses. Uh, we do have eight landing legs. The heavy, heavy-duty ones, like the LT2s, to try and make sure that this weight isn't too much. But we are very long. We are very, very heavy. And if we even slightly tip to the side when we're landing on these landing legs, we will collapse them. They will just not be able to take the weight, and will shift and fall to the side. So we're going to need to make sure we land very gently. I mean, really gently. I thought we'd use more fuel than this, and the fuel is fairly heavy. So these landing legs it's going to be interesting. Put it that way. Moho has no atmosphere so there's no saving us there. We're going to need to come down under the power of the fusion engine and hopefully do okay. But I think that's it for this episode. Next episode we'll find out if we can actually land this bloody thing. It's going to be interesting. I've been Enter Elysium and stay shiny.